Hello, and welcome to the Unreal Engine 5 Quick Start course. As this course is aimed at a new user to the engine, we're going to start with getting up and running with the engine and learning how the launcher is going to be used to manage our project and content. If you've downloaded the launcher and logged in, you may be presented with this screen. Now, the Epic Games launcher is both a store and the portal for Unreal Engine. If you default to the screen on the left, we can see our bars, and we can go to the Unreal Engine tab to load the Unreal Engine section. If you don't want the store, you can go to the settings and you can click on hide game library and after it processes your library if you have one it will go ahead and hide your store and game content we can go back into our main launcher and now you can see the store is gone and we just have unreal engine in our friends list now looking at our unreal engine tab we have a few things here's our home page for unreal engine where we get a bunch of new information and shortcuts to things like youtube answer hub in the forums we have our Learn tab. This is a great place to find examples and sample projects for learning the engine, as well as links at the top to our documentation and our online learning page. We have the Marketplace. This is a great place to get free and paid content for speeding up the development of your project. We have our Library. This is primarily where you're going to work with your project itself. It's going to show your installed engine versions, existing projects, and then any downloaded Marketplace content. Here you can see I have a couple projects, as well as a couple engine versions installed. You can keep older versions side by side. So if we want to install Unreal Engine 5 Preview, we could click Engine Versions. It'll give us a new entry. We could click the drop down. We can find the 5 Early Access and then install it. If you need to remove one, you can click on the little X to remove the slot or the drop down and remove the actual engine itself. There's also a quick launch in the top right. Primarily, once you've installed the engine, you'll be using the My Project Browser to browse projects that you have already. Now, how do we actually start a project? We can hit the Launch button, and it's going to launch our new Project Browser window, which we're going to cover in our next video. Once the editor has started, you're going to be presented with this window, the Unreal Project Browser. This is where we can see our current projects and create new projects either from scratch or using templates. Let's take a quick look at it. One thing to note, during this early access period, this window may change during development. At the top, we have our recent projects. So I have quick access to projects I may have created earlier. In this case, we can see a few Unreal Engine 5 projects. Or if you have a different version installed, you can see this notes, I have Unreal Engine 4.26 for this project. Below this, we have our templates. So for example, I could click on Games, it's going to ask me which template I would like to use to start my project and a few default settings. For example, I could create a handheld AR project to quickly get started with AR for iOS and other mobile devices. Or perhaps I wanted to do some virtual reality. The virtual reality template is great because it gets us some hands that work properly in VR, as well as some default locomotion setup. Now that we have an understanding of templates for creating a new project, let's take a look at how that actual project is set up. Here on our screen, we can see the basic layout of our project in the content browser in the bottom left and reflects how the project looks on our disk. If we were to right click on our content folder and choose show in Explorer, it's gonna find this project on our disk. Now we can see here that we have the content folder, which is where our content is stored. But if we go back one, we can find the main folder here. We can see our project consists of folders and files. It's not just one item. So if you ever wanted to share your project, you would share your actual folder. And that's important to note because that makes it easy to back up or put on source control or give to someone else. Now the important parts in here are gonna be like our config folder to hold our configuration, our content folder, which represents the content for our project, and then our save folder, as well as the intro.u project, which is the name of our project and it contains project settings. If we go into our content folder, ArchViz project, you'll notice on the left hand side we have ArchViz project. And if we were to go into there, we're going to find blueprints, geometry, levels, materials, and sequence. And if we were to look here, you'd see the same setup. So our content folder and our content in it matches the items on our disk.
Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the way the editor is laid out and some of the common windows you might encounter. Starting with our main toolbar, which is along the top that we can see here, we have access to some of the more common functions you're going to be using. Things such as creating new objects, looking at our content browser, quick access to blueprints and cinematics. Along the top, we have access to our editing modes. The first one being our select editing mode, which lets us select items inside of our viewport. Next to that, we're going to have our landscape mode, and we might have additional tools such as foliage editing, mesh painting, fracturing, or modeling. This toolbar allows us access to the common modes that we will work with in the engine. And next to this, we have the ability to play test. For example, if I was to hit play, it's going to go ahead and load up our little sequence or animation, show us a nice little preview of what we're going to be working with, and then end. And if you ever want to leave, you can hit the escape key when you're in the editor, or we can use the tools at the top to pause, stop, and eject. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We're going to pause and take a quick break from understanding the editor and look at some of the common types of items that make up our project and how they might be used. Starting with our content browser and the assets that make up our project, which we currently have set to collapse, I'm going to go to content, content browser one, if you don't already have one, drag the tab and snap it back to my bottom. That way I have a content browser that's already open. The items in our content browser represent assets. So could be a texture, could be a material, could be a blueprint, could be an object, could be a text file we've converted to a data table. It's the stuff we're going to use to make up our actual project. If we go into, let's say, geometry here, and here's our SM building. We can right click on it, and we're going to go ahead and show that in Explorer. And we're going to see inside of our storage device, in my Windows File Explorer here, we have a .u asset file. This is the FBX or our static mesh file brought in from somewhere else, imported into the engine, converted into Unreal's format, and then saved as an asset file. It's an asset that exists on the disk. The viewport, which is our window into the project that we are working on, is located in the middle of our screen, which you can see here. The viewport is how we can see what is in the world that makes up our project and where we can add and manipulate our assets by making them into actors that exist in our world. And if you remember from before, in order to exist in our world, it has to be an actor, so it has information. How do we navigate and how do we work with our viewport? Let's look at that first. If we hold down our right mouse button, we can simulate basically rotating our head in a fixed position. We're rotating the camera. Hold down the left mouse button, we can simulate kind of like we're a person. We can rotate our head left and right with the mouse going left and right. And the mouse going up and down or forward and backwards simulates us walking in that direction. Holding down both kind of locks us from going forward or backwards, but we can now move left or right or up or down in our scene. This is great, but it makes it a little difficult to get to certain places. Well, we have the ability to fly through our viewport. If we hold down the right mouse button, Up to this point in this course, we've done all of our work inside of a viewport without actually testing the project. We're going to take a quick look at the more common ways of testing our project inside of the editor and some of the differences between them. Now first, to get started and to follow along if you'd like to, you want to make sure you've opened up the supplied project. This project was designed to give you a starting set of assets to work with, as well as some learning examples that we'll be using as we go along with the rest of the course. On my screen, I have our starting project opened up, and it should open up to our map start. It's a simple little island with a little building, and we're going to start building this up. But the first thing we might want to do is let's preview this. Now, this one's pretty simple. We can just hit play, and it's going to go ahead and allow us to play inside of our viewport. If we click on the viewport, we now have mouse control. It's like we're navigating, except it's locked. We can look around, and we can use our WASD keys to fly around. But we do have things like collision working. We're previewing it more like a finished product rather than in the editor.
Up to this point, we've been working with some starter assets, but at this point, maybe we want to start using our own assets, something someone created or something we sourced from somewhere else. In order to do this, we need to start learning about importing assets into the engine. Also, in addition to that, we're going to look at maybe taking assets out of our project and putting it into another project, which is known as migrating, or adding in extra content after the fact that Epic has provided to us both from the marketplace as well as from the starter content or templates. Here's the project we've been working with. Now at this point, if you've been following along, I'm gonna close down my project settings tab since I won't need it. I'm also gonna change my game mode override back to my my game, just so everything functions like we expected. Now if you have world settings open, let's go back to our details tab and clear out any search just so we're back at our default settings. Included with our downloaded project is going to be some additional assets we're going to use to learn importing. Going into our project folder, we can see here I've named mine Intro UE5. I have a content folder. Inside of my content folder, I have an import me file. So far, we've looked at how the engine works and how we can start working with the editor. And the last thing we did was we imported some assets. One of those assets was a static mesh representing some crystals and its textures to go along with it. But when we brought it in, we got just a plain white material. We didn't actually get what it's supposed to look like, the appropriate colorized textures. Now, why is that? Well, it didn't know which textures were set up for this static mesh, so it created a default material, which was just white. If we go into our intro UE5, meshes folder we have this power up underscore a this is our material now i'm going to go ahead and rename this you can right click and rename or push the f2 key i'm going to rename this mat underscore power up a this represents a material i'm keeping standard naming conventions now if we open it up we can see we have this you basically have a single color represented by white or gray being outputted as the base color Well, now we have a basic scene. We've got some meshes we put in there with our own materials and textures we applied. Let's look at lighting it up. One thing we may notice as you're running around is your eyes are going to adjust based on the darkness and what you're looking at. Looking at brighter things will darken the scene. Looking at darker scenes will brighten the scene. What's happening is auto exposure or eye adaptation is kicking in. It tries to mimic what your eyes do naturally. So how can we adjust that? Do we even want to adjust that? In my case, I do, because I want to show you. You have an easy way of disabling it in the editor if you just want to work in the editor. If we go under Lit, we can uncheck Game Settings. That means it's not going to use the settings we've told the game to use, and it's going to use these EV values. So you can change it, for example, make it darker or brighter. Let's change this back to 1. But this is just in the editor. If we were to actually play again, it's not going to permanently change it. We'll turn game settings back on. How do we permanently change it? We have a scene that needs a bit more life. And now we're going to look at a few ways to start adding that life. We'll be starting with our Niagara effect system. This is a system which can be used to create the most basic effects, such as particles of dust floating in the air, to an entire simulation of millions of units clashing in a fight. Let's start with making that particle of dust. Inside of our project, find a spot that you like. I'm going to go with here. Let's go into our content, intro UE5 folder. Let's create a new folder. We'll call this one FX. Inside of our FX folder, we're going to right click go to FX and we're going to look at some of the things we have here. So Niagara can be fairly complex. We can do the basics like maybe just spawn something into the air, sparks or particles or clouds or smoke or fire, to doing things more complex such as taking that fire and then wrapping it around a person while that person is running and it conforms to the body. Let's create a Niagara emitter. So an emitter is basically what we're going to see inside the world. It represents a visual. Unreal Engine includes a system to not only automate repetitive tasks, 
but to add custom logic to items that might be in our project using the blueprint system. Let's go and take a quick look at that system now. This will not be an in-depth look at blueprints. There are, of course, other courses on that, but how blueprints might be used inside of our project here. We have our power-up. Now, our power-up's pretty plain. It just sits there. What can we do to make it a little bit more robust, a little better? Well, we could add some animation to it. We could go out into an external program. We could animate it, bring it back in, set up a skeletal mesh, play back the animation. Or we could do some basic animation inside of our engine right here. One thing we can do is go into our Blueprint folder under Intro UE5. We're going to right-click, and we're going to create a new Blueprint class. Now, this is going to ask us what our parent is. We want it to be in our world, and we want it to be really simple, so let's make it an actor. We're going to name this BP underscore power up, and then we're going to double-click to open it up. We're going to dock it to the top, and now we have the basics of our Blueprint opened up. Testing our project in the editor is good, but unfortunately it's not a very practical way of sharing the project with someone else or even seeing what the actual performance is when we're done. We're going to take a quick look at packaging our project for the Windows platform, as well as briefly look at how packaging works for other platforms such as Android and iOS. The most simple way of doing this is at the top of our screen we have a Platforms button. If we click on Platforms, we have access to all of our available platforms. We can see here I have the Android platform installed. It has an icon without this little exclamation mark and my Windows platform. Under Windows, I have the ability to package my project as well as determine how it's going to be packaged. For our testing, we're going to set up with development for Windows. And if we choose package project, what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and ask us where we want to package this project at. So I'm going to go to put it into my projects folder. I'm going to make a new folder called output. And we'll go ahead and tell it to package there. 